Um, sorry about the delays. Uh, so welcome back to the art club. Um, we haven't met in a while, in about a month and a half. Um, but um, we have a couple of sessions planned that will um, take us to the end of the year. Um, the order, the specific order might change a little bit. Um, um, but the idea is to, um, there's this paper called The Field Guide to Cultivate, Cultivating uh, Computational Biology that I want to discuss. Um, then Josh wanted to teach um, us how to access or open DNA genotype data. Um, so that's really like how to interact with uh, BCF files, variant comma uh, format files. Then Apua, who's a PI at Lever, um, he developed, uh, prior to joining Lever, he developed this uh, framework called RF for uh, reproducibility framework. And has, he's gonna teach us about it. Um, Abby um, has been using a lot of the spatial experiment package. And it has changed uh, quite a bit over bioconductor versions. Um, and so we're gonna attempt to do um, an overview of the, the structure of the spatial experiment objects. Um, although we found out earlier this week that they're planning to change the internal structure. So we might need to delay this session until that structure is a bit more stable. Um, then GeoPerta uh, has been using the data dot table package, uh, which is actually pretty good at reading, writing, and, and manipulating large tables in R. And it has a very different syntax to base R. Um, then um, um, another one that is kind of a, a little bit of a mix of previous sessions, we'll be talking about the Reprex package, but how to use it from the Gypsy Compute Cluster, uh, and maybe a little bit of GitHub. Um, um, and the idea of this is like how to ask for help when you encounter R errors in the, in the computing cluster, which is maybe a slightly different from what you would do if um, you're working on your own laptop. Then we have a couple of different sessions that are not assigned to a date yet. Um, but one of them is like, uh, I've been moving files around on Gypsy and setting up file permissions. So that could be a session about that. Now it's a collection of maybe four uh, bash scripts that I adapt based on the situation. Um, then we've been um, trying to clean up a lot of our um, um, projects on um, 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 like the GitHub repository or the Git repository, sorry, for projects that we have. And so there's this Git status size um, bash command that someone else wrote um, that um, we haven't really explained before. And, uh, and so here maybe the idea would be to demonstrate it with a, actually an active project. Um, was, we had uh, quite an advantage yesterday with, uh, with Louise uh, and uh, and the MDD project. Um, and another one uh, I uh, explained to uh, Nick and Luis was how to use the R mode package on Gypsy, um, um, which actually I started a blog post about this maybe in 2017 or 2018 that I never actually finished. Um, um, then David Zhang from uh, Mina Ryden's group in the UK has two sessions that he would like to um, teach at some point. Uh, one of them is about how to use pre-commit hooks in R. So uh, this is related to your interaction from an R package that you have version control with GitHub. Um, so it's kind of related to uh, um, it's kind of related to like GitHub Actions, but it's a bit different. Um, so I don't fully understand all the details, and so David Sank is going to help us with that. And then he's been developing Python packages from, but he's mostly like an R user. So he wants to talk about that transition. Um, Josh, uh, at some point, uh, I mean, he's been working on this uh, uh, top map DNA genotype imputation pipeline. So it might be good to like um, explain how to use it uh, to, pe to people once, once it's a bit more like complete. 
Uh, similarly, Louise has been working on this Decomo Buddies package for the uh, deconvolution of bulk RNA seq data. It's a really like help up, helper functions. Um, and so um, there's a package already uh, budding. <laughs> uh, um, and again, on a similar vein, Nick is also building a Nextflow pipeline for WGBS um, um, alignment. Uh, and, process, and basic processing of the data. And so uh, also once that pipeline is complete, we'll, we'll talk about it here. Um, cool. So uh, I wanted to start with like something that we've done in the past, um, which is like checking um, a release from Bioconductor and, um, and highlighting um, packages. So I simply made a copy of what we did like about a year ago for um, Bioconductor 3.12. Um, and so here we can see that we have a little um, table on Google that um, we put the URL to the package, a bit of a um, summary of what it does, um, and then why you would use it, um, and maybe like some author links to people. So I'm going to delete most of what we did here for um for 3.12 because i just made a copy of this uh, spreadsheet i'm going to leave the first one just mm. so you can have a little bit of an example there and so you go to the bioconductor.org website over here on the left on the news the very first item is that bioc or bioconductor 3.14 was released and so this happened like two days ago i think maybe three now um and um, let me zoom in a bit so you can see it um, more. Mm -hmm. All right. So <clears throat> 3.14 cross the 2000 package uh, barrier for software packages. So there's 2083. There's 408 data packages, 900 annotation, 21, 29 workloads. And importantly, like the book packages, it's a new category. Um, and now there's eight of them. Um, initially, it was just one, and, uh, but now there's eight. And like at the rate that the book category is increasing, it might actually overtake the workflow category in a couple of uh, Biconduct releases. Um, so that's a lot of packages, and that's why you can, like, simply staying updated can take quite a bit of effort. Um, and so we can see here that, like, actually there's 89 new software packages, um, 13 data, 10 annotation, one workflow. It says no new books, but, like, um, um, some of them are so recent that, like, you could almost consider them with new books. Um, and so, yeah, 3.14 is going to be compatible with R4.1.1. This might also be a good time to update your R Studio. Um, uh, I know some of you are using R Studio 1.2, which is maybe like two years old now. Um, um, so you might want to update your R Studio too. Um, in terms of Gypsy, uh, R4.1.1 is the um, let me open a terminal. Um, so uh, R4.1.1 would be the con underscore R4.1.x uh, X um, um, module. So if you want to switch to using uh, Bioconductor 3.14, you should switch um, also um, to using this module on Gypsy. Um, that might involve like reinstalling packages that you have. Um, cool. So um, again, this is a lot of like new information. Um, and so what we'll do is kind of like last time, um, We'll spend a bit of time simply like um, going through these uh, descriptions of the packages 
and try to highlight like the ones we think we would like to use, right? Um, so actually, let me add a little column to this. Um, 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 uh, And I'll call it like by. And so you can there, there you can see, uh, you know, we can increase the, the list here of people that say like, oh, I like this package. Um, and so there's a lot of them. Um, some of you might prefer to start from the end. It's all in like, um, um, it's all in like alphabetical order. Um, uh, some of you might want to, um, simply like search for some keywords. Um, what we're seeing here is the description of the authors themselves wrote about their package. Um, and it's normally like three or four sentences long. Um, um, some of them you might actually like want to open them and then check their vignette, um, uh, which we can see here on their, uh, the documentation section. Um, some of them might have HTML vignettes, some of them might have PDF vignettes. So you can then open the vignette and quickly like explore it. So I, I actually, this is out of coincidence, but I was chatting with Robert Costello on Slack yesterday. <laughs> um, Roberto Costello. Um, so yeah, you can explore the vignette. This looks like, at a bird's eye view, this looks pretty uh, complete to me. It even includes like the R session information at the end. Um, um, but these are this is information that can kind of tell you already. Like, is this a package that uh, is going to be um, uh, like trustworthy to use or not? Um, if the documentation is very uh, small or like looks incomplete, um, that typically doesn't speak that well of a, of of the um, quality of the package. You could also look at the dependencies. And this one, for example, has a very uh, small number of dependencies. Um, so that means like how many packages um, Athena in this case depends on, right? You have a large number of dependencies. If one of them breaks, the whole package can break. Um, my packages themselves, they tend to have quite a bit of dependencies. Uh, for example, if you simply depend on the summarized experiment package, that adds a lot of dependencies. Um, cool. So I don't know if people have any questions. Um, um, I don't think we need to use breakout rooms for this. Because um, we have like nine people today. So let me let me pause the recording. Um, so we spent like 20 minutes, 25 maybe, looking at um, the, the release news. And we have around 15 packages, I think, highlighted. Oh, there's an empty row over here, 14. Um, oh, um, so let's try to go over them. Um, Early. Um, so the first one I highlighted it, which is GG Spavius. Um, I've already known about this package for a while because it was developed by our, by our collaborator, Lucas Weber. Um, and it has visualization functions for spatial data. And a lot of them I think are overlapping with spatial LIBD, but maybe there's some new ones there that we could use. I think Luis, you're next on this one. Oh, it wasn't you? Oh, wait, wait, sorry. Um, yeah, so um, um, there's a deconvolution package that stood out to me because I've been doing a lot of work with that. Um, it's called deconvo R, and it looks like they have some tools um, where you can use different methods. Um, I didn't read into it too much, but it seemed like maybe this uh, package is focused more on methylation data. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, focused more on methylation data than our uh, RNA-seq data. Um, which is some like an angle we wanted to look at our data with as well. So it could be a useful tool for us there. Um. Thanks, Luis. Um, the next one I highlighted, which 
It's called it's called Pen GLS, which I'm guessing is Pen, and then the GLS is like general generalized linear. Uh, what is the S? I forget. Uh, uh, anyways, um, um, it has methods for computing the spatial correlation, particularly basically you just need to use two functions. Um, and they have a little example that I couldn't really understand from the vignette how useful it might be to our um, data with um, the spatial, uh, spatially resolved transcriptomics data that we have. But I thought like, okay, maybe we could use it. And the next one is, spa is spatial DE, which is like an R package that interfaces with the Python package with the same name. Um, and like, this one is like super relevant to what we do because it can identify spatially variable genes with the type of data that we have. And I also recognize one of the authors, uh, Lambda Moses. Um, so that was like, okay, we definitely want to uh, try that one out. Um, Adur, do you want to go next? Uh, sure. Um, I, I think I scrolled way too much and this is not a new package, but I think with some bug fixes. So I have used a complex heat map package to make heat maps with annotations and uh, different sections that is quite useful. And I, I know for some time they have an interactive complex heat map where you can make an HTML and uh, zoom around and play with some values. But uh, that's why I wanted to list it here. Uh, they have some shiny app also, like you can convert it to shiny and do a lot more things much easier to configure than, than the regular complex heat map. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. Cool, that's good. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff on Twitter about that, the complex heat map package. It looks pretty useful. I've not, I haven't spent the time uh, trying it out though. So maybe we could have a session about it at some point um, if you wanted to teach it. Um, Louise, do you want to go next? Immediately, Luis. Oh, yes. The next package I saw was Dino. Um, so it looks like it was a normalization for single cell RNA. Um, and I know that as we worked with it a little bit, we've had some trouble with um, how sparse these data sets are. And they kind of present like interesting computational challenges being so sparse. So they noted in like their little summary paragraph that um, it's specifically designed for sparse data. So I was curious to see like, how, like what their strategy was. Um, and then maybe we can use that to uh, analyze future um, 10X um, data sets, which I think we have coming down the pipeline, so. Cool, that was good. Um, Nina, do you wanna go next with Sparrow? Sure. Uh, so this is a tool that provides sort of a unified platform for looking at about 10 different bioconductor gene set enrichment analysis tests. And I thought it was uh, useful because it puts them all into one object. Like previously, when I've done this kind of work, you do each one separately and I've never done, you know, don't necessarily pick all 10, you pick a few. This seems comprehensive and well-organized. Yeah, that makes it easy, no? <laughs> so, <laughs> sounds pretty useful. Thanks, Nina. Um, so um, this other one called new CA. Um, I, it has a very short vignette, but um, it says it has tools for annotating cell clusters. So you basically like give it a training and a test um, data. Um, so you, have, you give it a training data set where you, I guess, have clusters that have their annotation and then it tries to predict um, the, um, the clusters um, and labels on the test data. Um, and so I thought like, oh, maybe it could be useful for annotating spatial clusters if you have two spatial data sets, um, which we have one such situation ourselves. Um, I don't know, Louise, if you want to add anything to it that. Um, yeah, I just saw that uh, you added that and um, I think I was interested for all the same reasons. So I a little, added my vote. <laughs> cool, thanks. You want to do the next one? Uh, yeah, uh, so Plot Gardener, I actually saw this pop up on Twitter like maybe a week ago, um, but basically it's a tool to like combine a lot of figures um, into like a multi-panel and um, there's other packages that do this. I think that's like, there's one called Patchwork, 
Um, but they kind of like build it as like, you know, it really makes like publication ready figures. It's designed to handle like all sorts of different plots. Um, so I, I thought it might be um, uh, good for, you know, adding, you know, figure one, A, B, C, like all in one and making that process easier. Um, all right. That sounds really um, something we could use basically daily. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Thanks, Luis. Nina, do you want to do the next one? Sure. This one I have not thoroughly read yet, but it basically looks like a tool for scanning for microRNA binding sites and then predicting targets based either on the seed sequence or the full length microRNA. Um, what most appealed to me was that it has some interesting ways to visualize miRNA target alignment, which I think might be useful, um, but I haven't read enough to really understand what kind of, uh, what they're doing like under the hood and computationally how they're predicting these things. <laughs> yeah, no, like the idea of this is just to try to prune the list of all the packages to some that we might want to check in more detail later, right? Uh, but yeah, so that sounds like it, um, scan mirror perfectly fits that description. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Nina. Uh, the next one is, uh, um, I don't know how to pronounce it properly. I think it's older. Um, so actually, this one was very easy for me to add because like this improves the data finder package, which is a package I developed in my PG. And uh, I've known about this for a while. Um, and this is developed by David Zhang from Mina Writings Group. Uh, so it was fairly easy. The next one I added is the scatter catch, which has visualization tools that are friendly for visually impaired individuals. So basically what it adds is like, it uses not only colors for differentiating clusters, let's say, of, um, of single cell data, but it also uses different patterns of lines in, in, on top of the colors. So if, if someone can't really differentiate the colors that well, they might be able to differentiate the patterns of lines. Um, um, and so um, I think if I remember correctly, this package started after a session on how to a discussion session at the BioC 2020 conference on how to help uh, people that have visual impairments. Um, and the author is actually a postdoc or maybe a former postdoc of Atlanta for Dick here at Hopkins. Um, so I thought like, okay, this could be useful and like uh, um, to make sure that the plots that we make are can be seen by more people, right? Um, 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 so I thought like, okay, maybe we could, check it out a bit more. We could even do try to do a session about like visualization packages that try to uh, address this problem of helping everyone be able, being able to see the data. Uh, Luis, you want to do la the last one? Yeah, so this one I added uh, right at the buzzer there, so I didn't get to read into it too much, but it seems like it is a package that's designed to do, um, I guess, uh, tree-based clustering based on the name, um, but kind of like it's supposed to be helpful for looking at single cell um, data at different resolutions of clustering. Um, and it looks like it's designed to work with Sunrise Experiment. It's like this class extends on Sunrise Experiment. So I'm curious to see what that means. Um, but yeah, it might be another useful tool for uh, future single cell um, analysis, yeah. Cool, awesome. Um, I just wanna give a shout out to the Mona Lisa package because I thought that was a great name. <laughs> um, and uh, um, well, thank you everyone for um, joining us today and sorry for the delay at the beginning. Um, so next week uh, will be this uh, paper discussion um, um, on, um, uh, you can find the link on the RSTATS um, Google Sheet. Um, cool, and um, good luck updating to Bioconductor 314 and all the stuff that that involves. See you around, bye. Bye, thank you. Bye.